start out with inviting you to together with me as a community as a as a world soak in the idea that there is a greater good available in the universe what do i start every sunday out with this quote you are an irresistible magnet with the power to attract unto yourself everything that you desire and to make sure I get it exactly right, I have it written down. Because I like the words as they're written. Let us together now soak in the idea that there is a greater good available in the universe. The universe is infinite. The universe has infinite possibilities, infinite opportunities. They don't just end because you're a certain age or not a certain age or a certain sociological this, that, or the other, or not one. The infinite opportunities are there at all times. And you can have it. You will have it. I will have it. I am having it. Are you having it? Of course you are. Even if you don't know it, you are having it. So let's have it intentionally. You're having it right now. You know, just sometimes we don't recognize it because the greater good doesn't always show up as this big thing. The orchestra doesn't swell, the heavens don't open, the seas don't part. Or maybe sometimes we don't even allow ourselves to see it, feel it, or experience it in any way. We kind of shut ourselves off. We don't allow ourselves to vibrate at the speed of the divine. And if we are, doing this in some statistical way uh, versus an intentional way, we don't realize it. And so we don't really get to take full advantage of this gift that is given to us at birth. Each of us is the harvester of our own good. Not our job, not our family, not our government or any particular political political party or any religion or even any spiritual philosophy. It is not the power. It could be an influence, but the power is in you. Remember the law of you? The power is in you. The power is in me. Not them. Not it. Outside it, not divine it. But in you. When we focus our power of joy. Now remember, the act of joy being in the physical, mental, and spiritual aspect um, and not happiness. I'll talk about the difference there. But when we focus the power of joy and stand grateful in its presence, guidance, and love, intentionally, you think that, you make the statement, you make the comment. Hate in the world? starts falling away. Anger that you may have starts to settle. So we can take smart, emotionally intelligent action. The disappointments that you may have had, they wither and die. They start to have no effect on what's happening to you right now and thus what's happening to you and with you in the future. And we start to let go of the past junk ideas and triggers, whatever they were by sitting in joy, by allowing ourselves to intentionally vibrate at the speed of the divine. Now, why does that happen? Why do we do that? Like I said, joy is not about happiness. Happiness is the kind of a state of mind at the moment. It's a, it's a mood that comes and goes per an experience or the anticipation of an experience. It's It, it can be part of your perspective, but it's based on external occurrences. We don't want to base our lives on external occurrences. We want to create the external occurrences. We want to be in creative control of the exterior, external occurrences. 
But that's where happiness comes from external stuff. Joy is above and beyond the state of mind. It's your state of being. And being in joy is found in a deep connection to God or whatever you want to call it. You don't have to call it God. To that divine power, that divine presence, that singularity of energy that created the entire universe. That true source and substance of the experience you may or may not be happy about. That's where joy lies. A state of being and a state of being overwhelms, overpowers anything in your state of mind. So what is your state of being? What is my state of being? Your perspective on life derives from your faith and connection to the divine. But only you have the power to make that connection. I can't make that connection totally for you. I can in prayer. I can in counseling as someone trained to do that can know that for you. So that energy, as you allow it to come through, that energy inspires you, inspires you to, to make that connection, to make that vibration. But only you have the power to really make that connection, to make joy the state of mind and the state of being you want to live in. There was this guy named Ezekiel, and he was a prophet, a priest that was captured by the Babylonians and exiled from Jerusalem to Mesopotamia. And he prophesied about the presence of spirit within. That's what he talked about, that spirit within. Not as the people as a whole, even though it is, but as a person individually. And I would go beyond that. Beyond personhood, I would say that's in all living uh, energies, even a rock that has living atoms going on within it, and of course, plants and animals. But we're talking about humans, our humanity and, and our fellow humanity. Ezekiel's theology taught about individual responsibility to that presence within. And in the story, in part of the story, the universe, or God, whatever you want to call it, spoke to Ezekiel and said this, Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and I shall purify you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Now, the filthiness was not about the um, clothing he was wearing or his um, whether he showered lately. The filthiness was about those past experiences, those past beliefs that no longer served him that was still hanging around. The, the universe was saying, hey, you vibrate at the speed of the divine that is within you. Then those past beliefs, those past experiences, they're no longer going to have an effect on you. They're no longer going to trigger you. Because the power that I have given and put into you and embodied in you will help you have feelings and not triggered emotions. And the idols that the universe was talking about in that quote was about all that hate and all the fear and ego, the kind of ego that Edges got out, which has been the norm for him, for Ezekiel in this story, but maybe for you too, maybe for me here and there too. A little hate, a little fear, a little um, ego that doesn't include vibrating at the speed of the divine. Not the healthy ego that keeps you uh, confident and moving forward, but that ego that says, I don't, I don't need anything. I don't need the power that's within me. The people who live by statistics alone and not by their own uh, embodied power. That's the idolatry that the universe was talking to you about in Ezekiel. To Ezekiel. To get joy, we must use our tools. We must occasionally, all through your life, you must, I do it. I have to do it now and again. Take a mental bath, a mental bath. 
That's what the universe was telling Ezekiel. You got to take a mental bath. You got to clean all that stuff out. You got to take the moment for yourself and meditate or visualize or envision or just to open up your mind, heart, uh, gut, and listen and sit and listen. Like the great songwriter and poet and philosopher wrote, Jack Fowler is his name, in the silence there is peace. In the silence there is unspoken joy. In the silence there's release as my heart opens up to the voice, to the voice, to the voice of God, to the voice of the universe, to the voice of that divine intelligence and love and grace, that power and presence that is within you right now, that joy that joy in that silence, in that contemplation. Ezekiel heard the universe speak and say unto him through that intuition, through that gut, you can't see me, I'm pointing to my gut. Through that gut, Ezekiel heard, a new heart will I give you, Ezekiel. A new spirit will I put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone out of your flesh, and I will give you heart of flesh. You vibrate at the speed of the divine. You make that joyous connection to that energy of the universe. The universe will take that hard, cold, dead, unmoving, unfeeling heart, as it did for Ezekiel, and replace it with one that's alive, that is conscious, that is present, that is full of feeling, and that works in a holistic rhythm with mind, with brain, with intuition. So they all talk to each other. So that's this divine matrix, as I have come to call it. speak to each other all the time. And as we do it intentionally, so often, so too will it do it more often. Talk to each other so that we don't react to things. We respond to things with divine intelligence because in joy, we are vibrating at the speed, at the intelligence of the creative universe. The kingdom of heaven is within, was expressed by Yeshua, was expressed by Ernest Holmes and all the new thought uh, um, leaders of our time. And the Tao, in its own way, doesn't use these exact words, tells you the kingdom of heaven is within, the divine is within. We'll get to this quote that's, you can barely see there. That's Meister Eckhart wrote this. He was a Catholic mystic in the Middle Ages. He wrote, the eye with which I see God is the same eye through which God sees me. My eye and God's eye are one eye, one seeing, one knowing, one love. That's so beautiful and so powerful at the same time. The unity philosophy, which is a, a new thought philosophy and, and religion actually, their second principle says, we are spiritual beings created in God's image. The spirit of God lives within each person. God's image doesn't mean the look. God's image means the whole package, the energy, the look of the energy of one, not the face, not the body. What is beyond that, the consciousness, the image of the consciousness, what that looks like, what that power and that love and that intelligence looks like. 
We create our life experiences through our way of thinking. And when we are in gratitude, remember that's our theme this month, in gratitude, knowing no matter what, we are here to experience life as God and with God. There's that uh, famous book, Three Magic Words. Originally, it was called what the final chapter talks about. You are God. That was the original title. You are God. Or as Pierre Teilhard de Chardin reminds us, and this is a very famous quote, I'm sure you've heard it. We are spiritual beings living in a spiritual universe, having a human experience. But having that human experience doesn't take away from our powerful, from our power of being a spiritual being living in a spiritual universe, able to vibrate at the speed of that spirituality, of that divinity. We can be in a state of rejoice living. Again, no matter what's going on. And it doesn't take away from the, um, the feelings and the emotions and the sentiment of things that might be going on it actually adds to it by rejoice in your living, being in gratitude about just being alive. And I get it, I get it. Some days or many, too many days for some of us, we may not feel grateful. We may not be in gratitude about being alive or feel like being in gratitude about being alive. There could be a dis-ease of body, mind, spirit, pocketbook, that can cause you to not feel much happiness. But we don't wanna equate happiness with joy. As my friend Yurka reminded me, if you argue for your limitations, you will own them. Instead, focus on the possibilities. The possibilities lie in the universe possibilities lie in your intentional connection, the joy with God. I'll say it with God. If you don't like that word, change it, but with God. Remember joy transcends happiness or any experience. It's an intellectual, it's an intentional and intellectual. It can be, it's partly intellectual. It may start that way too. It may start intellectual and then seep into the spiritual where it really belongs, but it's an intentional connection to the spirit that is within you. Abraham Hicks wrote, uh, your inner being has no limits. Excuse me, I have something in my eye. Your inner being feels no limit and has no limit. So anything that feels like limits is something that you have self-imposed. Abraham Licks, Hicks. <laughs> so look at what you have self-imposed in your thinking. Look at what you have self-imposed in your perspective on life or your perception on life. And like Ezekiel, whose name actually means God strengthens, by the way, allow the light of the divine love and intelligence inform you. Not a disease of any sort, anywhere, anytime. Allow the creation itself, the power of creation itself to light your fire. Not the less than ideas you've been taught or hung, have been hanging on to or accepted in life. Walt Whitman, Walt, Walt Whitman, I'm getting the wh backwards, Walt Whitman wrote, Oh, to realize space, the plenteousness of all, that there are no bounds to emerge and be of the sky of the sun and of the moon and flying clouds as one with them. That plenteousness of space that has no bounds is here. It's right now. You don't have to go anywhere. It's right with you. 
you can, no matter the happiness or sadness in your life, be a part of that. For joy is a perspective, an idea, a state of being that only you have the power to embrace. Not your therapist, not your teacher, not your parent, lover, or bestie. You. You. Yeah, they may, like I said, motivate you a little bit to embrace it. They may inspire you to embrace it. But it's you using the power of you that is embedded in you must embrace it. Neil Donald Walsh, who wrote Conversations with God, said the purpose of life is to recreate yourself in you in the highest version of the grandest vision you ever, ever had about yourself. Challenge your present way of thinking and move into a grander and larger experience of who you really are. At the beginning, I said to soak in the idea that there is a greater good available in the universe. I can have it. You can have it. We can all have at it. So know this or allow me to know this for you till you can know this. No matter your circumstances, I know you will have it, this joy. You are having it, this joy. I believe it, I declare it, and I am in great gratitude for it. I am in gratitude for you to live it today, this joy, to live it tomorrow, this joy, and forevermore, joy, joy, joy.